Thanks, Michael. Thanks, everybody, for coming today. Thanks for everybody that's joining on Zoom. We have a low-budget Zoom setup that we hope is going to be reasonably okay. Um, but bear with us if, if there are little bits of dealing difficulties along the way. And so what I really wanted to just open up with is an overview of all the research that's happening right now. Um, but just start off with a sort of very brief um, explanation of, of actually why you know why all this research is happening and why we need a cure and so you get to see the slide quite a lot I think um, when someone first acquires HIV there's typically a big spike in the amount of virus in the body um, the immune system kind of does its best to suppress the, the virus replication that's going on um, but it's not able to fully suppress you know one of the problems with HIV is that it's there, directly targeting immune system cells cells and so unlike something like SARS which is in the lungs or hepatitis which is in the liver the immune system is trying to deal with something that's replicating in the immune system and that presents a challenge and so it's very rare that anybody's really able to get virus replication under control and it's only when antiretroviral therapy has started that the virus is suppressed at undetectable levels but the problem is even if people are on long-term uh, antiretroviral therapy and the virus is well suppressed when somebody stops the virus rebounds um, the lack of control happens again and there's a sort of war of attrition with the immune system that unfortunately most of the time the virus wins and people become at risk for opportunistic infections and aids and so clearly there's some virus that's lingering around in the body despite the viral load being undetectable and it's able to come back and this is a really busy slide, particularly for first thing in the morning, and I'm, I'm not going to go all the way through it. Um, I think the important thing to know is that there's a subset of immune cells that are HIV targets, preferentially CD4 T cells. They're kind of built to be able to uh, last a, a very long time. And um, that's why when you have a something like measles in childhood, you develop uh, CD4 cells to respond to that and they self-renew and persist through your life so you don't get measles again. That's kind of how the memory of that, that infection works. And HIV exploits that ability of CD4 T cells to survive by in the cells that it infects, it can keep a copy of its genetic blueprint in those cells. And when antiretroviral therapy is stopped, that genetic blueprint can stop making more HIV and cause the viral load rebound. I mean, there's various ways. Sometimes the virus is hiding in those CD4 T cells. The genetic blueprint is there, but the, the immune system can't actually see that the cell is infected. So that's a big problem for trying to get rid of the virus that's there. Sometimes it does kind of spit out bits of viruses, but the uh, antiretroviral therapy stops that virus going anywhere. And so we have these terms now, latent reservoir for when it's fully hidden, active reservoir when it might be making some virus, most of the virus is defective. It kind of gets trampled inside the cell and there's just bits of the genetic code that can't make a full virus. And then I think something that, um, and Jared will talk, uh, Jared Stern is kind of going to talk a lot more in more detail about this later, that there may be some virus that's kind of trapped in the cells and, and can't get out that may not be such an issue uh, for, for a cure. And so there's a bunch of ideas out there for, for, for trying to get rid of this virus that's persisting despite antiretroviral therapy. Uh, trying to wake up the virus that's fully hidden in cells so the immune system can see it, try and promote clearance of that virus that's hanging around in somebody that's on antiretroviral therapy with undetectable viral load, boost the ability of the immune system to kick in and control the viral virus when somebody stops antiretroviral therapy. And then because CD4 T cells are really key cells of the immune system, maybe one important strategy would be to try and protect them from HIV infection. So there's some gene therapies possibly some drugs that may be able to help protect those vulnerable cells. And that's the kind of background with the, in terms of what's happening with clinical research as of this month, you know, TAG's been trying to track this for a few years now. We take the information from clinical trial registries. It's, it's kind of not perfect because not all trials have to be registered. Um, and we produce this every, update every month. Um, this is what the first page looked like. We, we haven't won any design awards for it, but um, it kind of contains all the information 
a couple of the studies here actually under antibodies um, you'll be hearing, hearing about from Dr. Shelley Karuna later. And right now there's uh, 93 interventional trials, so trials that are doing something or giving something, 90 adult and three pediatric. And I've just broken down the stages. The Usually for phase three, we think of phase three testing efficacy. We don't have that yet in cure. There's a few trials that are called phase three just because the things they're evaluating are, are, are approved or, or well tested. But as you can see, the majority are really early phase studies because there's a lot to figure out in terms of how we're going to get to a cure. There's also observational studies where people just kind of donate um, blood or, or tissue or uh, they're observed in other ways to try and track what's happening with the reservoir to try and figure out better how, how we're going to deal with it. Um, and part of cure research uh, is um, that that's kind of a little uh, complicated and, and sort of raises a lot some issues. It is analytical treatment interruptions, where if there's some possibility that an intervention may maybe help promote control of HIV viral load when treatment is stopped, then they'll interrupt antiretroviral therapy to assess what happens, track the viral load rebound, see when it rebounds, see if the immune system can kick in and control. And this is kind of an eye test. Um, in, 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 it breaks down the different categories of interventions that are being studied right now. The only things that I really want to draw attention to here is that this big bar, it, it, the highest bar is combinations. So much like with antiretroviral therapy, um, this is really emerging as the sort of main mode of, of trying to develop curative interventions right now is combining different strategies. Also, antibodies is a big category primarily because of broadly neutralizing antibodies that you might have heard of. The sort of natural antibodies that are very good at inhibiting HIV and might be able to promote the clearance of, of virus infected cells. Gene therapies, that, that area of research has also expanded. Immune checkpoint inhibitors that are somewhere approved for cancer that might be able to re revive the immune response to HIV. And therapeutic vaccines are also intended to sort of boost the response to HIV. And I've just broken it down out here and highlighted the types of studies where they're most likely to be. Uh, analytical treatment interruptions. So these are interventions where there's some hope that maybe the uh, control of viral load after antiretroviral therapy is stopped can be modulated. Um, this is particularly happening with broadly neutralizing antibodies, which we'll hear about more later. Um, there's seven of those kinds of studies with treatment interruptions, combinations, gene therapies, therapeutic vaccines, and a couple of immune checkpoint inhibitor trials um, that, are, that are including ATIs. The, the other kinds of categories are sort of more looking at how these interventions might affect the reservoir, but there's not so much a goal of, of, of leading to, to better control. And I've kind of tried to break down all these different categories of, of treatments that are currently being investigated in clinical studies into sort of where they fit in this picture of what's trying to be achieved. And I, and I think the only really thing I, I want to show here is that potentially encouragingly is there is overlap between so cytokines or a kind of immune system messenger protein that maybe can help promote control of viral load, but perhaps they can also reverse latency in some cases. So there's possible overlap between these different areas of therapies that are being explored. And I obviously don't have time to sort of go, go through each one right now, but there, there, there's a really broad array of things being looked at. Um, this is uh, just a breakdown of where the studies are happening as of February 2023, and I think probably not too surprisingly, most of them are happening in the United States, um, or at least have study sites in the United States. France is next, China, oh. Thailand, Australia, South Africa. There's, there's more studies happening in South Africa now than when uh, we first started uh, uh, doing this listing, so that's beginning to expand. Um, a lot of the uh, smaller, uh, rep smaller represented countries, their sites for kind of multi-center studies, like impact uh, study for, for for newborns. Um, there's relatively few studies with analytical treatment happens happening in uh, the majority world, which is uh, the term being used now more commonly than uh, global south or, or developing world because it's where the majority of people live. Um, and one we'll be hearing about later from Dr. Kruner is, is uh, a broadly neutralizing antibody um, in people that had acquired infection during the prevention trial called the anti-mediated prevention trial, which has multiple sites in African countries and also another study in South America. There's a new ACE clinical trials group study um, 
and with sites in Brazil and Peru. Uh, there's a study that Dr. Krista Dong will um, talk about for a little bit, uh, um, uh, happening in the fresh cohort in, in uh, of, of young women in South Africa, and the one I just mentioned in, in, in newborns through the impact network. And out of the listing currently in February, there's only four pediatric studies overall. Uh, the impact study, a therapeutic vaccine study uh, supported by the Penta Foundation, the early infant treatment in Botswana that's been going on for some time, has quite a lot of publications, and a long-term study of, 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 of children and, and young people that were treated early through impact studies. There's not that much industry involvement in terms of primary sponsors right now. This is a breakdown of highlighted what we might think of as the sort of big pharma companies that are involved that do have HIV cure research programs. There's AbV is a sort of fairly recent entry into this field. Gilead Sciences has been at it for a while and is supporting the study in the fresh cohort in South Africa. And Viv Healthcare has a program. This one study is over broadly neutralizing anti antibody and they may be looking at it probably more as treatment and than cure at this time. I also just wanted to look and, and see, there's only one study that, that is has a primary sponsor of an African research institution, which is an issue because obviously we need to understand what the HIV reservoir looks like in people all around the world. And there hasn't really been that much, um, there needs to be more research in that area. There's been a long time in study in Uganda that has wrapped up. And this one study that's ongoing in, in Kenya through the Kenya Medical Research Institute. And so um, hopefully I'm on time. Um, and just to briefly summarize, I, I, this is probably isn't very surprising. The U US remains the, the sort of most common site of, of cure related research uh, and uh, the National Institute of Health being the major source of funding support. Um, there's a report that AVAC and the International AIDS Society put out, which I think will, will be updated shortly, that looks at how the funding breaks down. There, it does seem that studies uh, involving treatment interruptions are starting to happen more frequently in uh, outside of the US, Europe, and Australia, where they've been most common in the past. Uh, a minority of studies are, are, are sponsored by industry, and research institutions based in the global north are still really, um, are, are, because that's where the funding is, are, are leading most of this research. And I'm going to stop there and hand over to Liz Barr to kind of go into more detail about what we know uh, with the studies that are, that are happening at the moment. Mm -hmm.